You may have seen bikes like these out on the roads recently, or even on the internet, and you might be wondering what on earth is going on? Why are there rocket ships kicking about the roads? Well, today we're gonna to answer that question. What is the big difference between tri bikes and road bikes? And most importantly, which is faster? Hello everyone and welcome to another video. As you may have gathered by this point today, we are gonna be answering the question, which is faster, road bikes or tri bikes? We are here at the foot of Arthur's seat, which is Edinburgh's cycling hotspot, bank holiday, which neither of us have realized, which means that it's very busy. The roads are quite packed and parking was a nightmare. So that is on us slash the queen, but we'll move on, we'll move on. So on our right, we have the Cervelo Caledonia 5, and on our left, we have the Cervelo P3X. This is a tri bike, this is a road bike. What I'm gonna do first of all is run through the principal differences between the two, and then we are gonna do a one lap test, which is about 13 minutes of work, give or take, on the road bike, then the tri bike, compare stats, see which is faster. Simple as that. So, let's get to work. So this is the Cervelo Caledonia 5, and not only is it a joy to ride, but it is also a conventional looking road bike. So I'm not gonna break down the features of a road bike too much, as I'm sure if you've come this far, you're probably aware of what they are and what a road bike looks like. You just see a lot of people out in Lycra on the road getting shouted at by white van men. So you'll know what these look like, but top line features for comparison, regular looking handlebars, gears are just here, brakes are just here, Key feature on this bike is we have wireless gearing that goes through here, through these boxes here to change from the big ring to the small ring, and then up and down your gearing. We've got disc brakes on here, and then the crank length on these will typically be a little bit longer because your position is a little bit more upright. So let's say a mountain bike position is like this, a road bike position is like this, and a tri bike position is like that. And then from the side, so the visual makes sense, mountain bike, road bike, tri bike, completely arbitrary made that up, but just for comparison, it'll all make sense. So that is a road bike. You've seen these before. What you might not have seen and what you might be more interested in today is this. So this is the Cervelo P3X. And for those that aren't aware, this was actually the bicycle that Darth Vader grew up riding in Tatooine, as you can tell by the color scheme and just general menacing look of the thing. So some key details to start with is the frame angle is much more aggressive. So we've got sharper angles everywhere you look. The handlebars are sharper, the forks are sharper, everything is intended to be as aerodynamic as possible. And that leads nicely into point number two, which is the aero slash tri bars, depending on what you want to call them. These are the most significant aerodynamic gain you can make on a bike. So you might sometimes see people putting tri bars on their road bike because that gives them the option to sit up in a road bike position, but also get the aerodynamic benefits from sitting forwards. Point number three is you often have gearing, whether mechanical or wireless or sort of electric like I've got here, up on the end of the tri bars. I do also have the option with Ultegra Di2 to change my gears down here, but if you're on, if you're on mechanical gearing on a tri bike, generally speaking, you will be up and down up here. So that does mean that there's a bit of a distance from here to here if you want to brake, which is something to consider from a safety point of view, but there we are. Most aerodynamic gain you can have on a bike right here. Then that gives us the opportunity to house some race specific features. First and foremost is the hydration system, which I've got between my aero bars, which means I can sip as I go, rather than if I was on a road bike, reaching down, sipping up, reaching behind, sipping up, whatever it may be. Then as well as that, we've also got the bento box here, which means I've got food storage ready to go. I've also got a little pouch here that I can stick a gel in, ready to go as well. I have a toolbox here with some tubeless repair kit, some CO2 canisters, and then in here I have more storage, salt tablets as a last resort backup. Top tip, always have salt tablets as a last reserve backup, believe me. For me personally, other thing to consider is I have 155 length cranks on here and I have 172.5 cranks there. I am gonna shorten those, but because of that change in position from here to here to here, as I've said, it means that the crank length is slightly altered from a bike fitting point of view, but that's a bit of a separate discussion in terms of optimizing your position. There are a few additional features on this bike here that I'm gonna cover off before we go and bash about Arthur's seat. So <laughs> you'd have to be uh, needing an eye test to not have noticed, but there is a back disc wheel on this here, as you might've been able to see. And rather than just adding mad swag, as I think we can all agree it does, 
it is there to basically buffer the wind from side to side to make you more aerodynamic over a certain speed. General consensus is anything over 40 kilometers an hour is when it really becomes beneficial. But from a feel and a perspective point of view, I do generally feel it does just make me faster over sort of flatter sections in aero position. So I've stuck it on and I'm gonna keep it on plus it looks sick, so I think we'll just move on from that. And one final thing to note is if you're thinking, oh my goodness, how horrible all his wires are exposed, that is because in transit at the weekend on the way back from Torridon, in the back of the truck, the thing that covers up all my wiring for my gearing was lost and cracked up a little bit. So I'm trying to super glue save it, but it has not yet worked. So if you're thinking, wow, Fergus, that looks horrendous and so exposed, I agree. So. Don't bother. So to summarize, the overall frame set of a tri bike shifts you into a more forward aggressive position, which does allow you to come off the bike into the run a little bit more opened up with more in your legs. Number two, tri bars, aero bars are the single most effective aerodynamic change you can make. So having them on the front makes you faster in that position over time. But it's worth mentioning that that position takes practice and it's something that you need to get used to and changes the way that you interact with the bike as a whole. So I'm not gonna get in depth by detail there. Number three is we have the storage options. So we've got the bento box, the hydration system, we've got the storage down here, which means it's triathlon race specific. So there's less chance of you having to get off your bike, stop at aid stations, etc. as you go. I have shorter cranks on my tri bike, which changes my cadence and changes the movement in general terms. The overall angles of the bike are slightly more aggressive and sharper just to make you cut through the wind a little bit more. And there are a fair few more add-ons that you can chuck on top of the already rather expensive bike like a big obnoxious disc wheel or additional hydration options or all the stupid things that cost hundreds of pounds that you don't expect like aero bar specific mounts and stuff like that but i think the only thing left to do now is head just over that way to get to the bottom position of the strava segment which is a loop around arthur's seat so that we can test the road bike first and foremost and then test the tri bike and compare the data so if you're as excited as i am i will see you over there Fun fact, 75 to 80% of drag on a triathlon course comes from you, not the bike, which is why today's comparison is oh so exciting and oh so important when it comes to considering speed over time. So why don't I stick a helmet on, stick some cleats on, and actually see you over at the start line this time. So lap one actually turned into a warm-up lap as half of this route is on closed roads and the other half is on a open road. And for the open road, I was behind a learner driver going 10 in a 30 the entire time. So that was a completely useless time trial in the end. So therefore, I now have good visibility on what the wind's doing, how busy it is, et cetera, et cetera. So why don't we just take you through a bit of a video of what the route actually looks like. Starts with an incline that goes on for a little bit and then we've got sort of a flat section around the water into one last little bit of a hill before you come into visibility of Edinburgh Castle. And then it's a pretty aggressive downhill with some fairly sharp cornering around roundabouts. And then it's a flat headwind the whole way into where we are now. So it's gonna be an interesting comparison today, but I am gonna to have to give this a second go. So I will see you at the start point again right now, I guess. Okay, so car interference there was about as expected as normal. So gonna be very comparable to the dry bike. 12.17, it's 5.3K. Average speed there was 25.9, max was 52.3. Average power was 240, max was 610. Normalized power was 282. I'll put all the data on the screen for you, by the way, so it's all visible. And then at the end, we'll compare side by side. 
and elevation for that's about it's about 100 meters so whatever it says on the screen we'll go with that so basically the brief is to see how we compare to 1217 so i'm going to put an aero helmet on and see you i don't know let's go into this hand right here Okay, so interesting results. We'll start with the bottom line, which is road bike here, tri bike there. Don't know why I went across, but as you were. So road bike, Arthur seat, lap from gate is a segment that we're working off here. 11.56 and on the tri bike, Arthur seat, lap from gate, 12.14. Interestingly, 30 more watts as an average on the Arthur seat, lap from gate on the road bike. So 244 compared to 214 on the tri bike. If we go into top line analysis, then we can see that the elevation came out the same. So it's good to know that all this data is working off the same parameters. Speed, average speed on the road bike, 25.9, max speed, 53.2, tri bike, 25.3, 52.8, which is a bit surprising to be honest, but I reckon the reason for that is that I was a little bit more tentative on the brakes, on the downhills, just because crosswinds affect the disc and the deeper dish wheels so much more. And I've come off my bike recently on this one so just that little bit less control around corners made me a bit more tentative but it goes to show control and bike handling are a key consideration here so one of the elements i've been slowed down on is the the road handling of this bike in comparison to the road bike heart rate average heart rate 155 and average heart rate in the tri bike 151 so lower overall effort on the tri bike and if i'm being honest i felt much more cruisy on the tri bike without wanting to push this wasn't a full send effort on either it was more like a tempo pace on both but tempo pace on the road bike felt harder and that's reflected in the data so road bikes generally are better uphills so they're better at climbing one because they're lighter but two because you get so much more control than that more upright position as well as a better gear ratio and then generally downhill you've got much more braking power you've got much more control and much more handling so overall for a course like today if i'd have put money on it beforehand i would have said the tri bike was going to come out on top because of the downhill section at the end but it turns out that even the 100 meters of climbing that we do have has made a big difference and the handling around corners the handling into roundabouts means that for this small 5.2k section the road bike has in fact come out on top here, which is a bit ridiculous really, but this is not to say that tri bikes are slower than road bikes. It is in fact to say that I have chosen a terrible course for this video. So for that, I apologize. A few key segments that I'm just gonna to touch upon before we finish things up. On the climbs, let's take Arthur's seat climb, for example. So 533 on the road bike and 548 on the tri bike. However, again, average watts on the road bike were higher which means the overall effort was higher. Then when we get comparable, so on the flat sections, my average pace, interestingly, on a few segments was the same, but the overall watts were about 20 or 30 lower and my heart rate was lower. So it just goes to show the comparison of effort versus pace overall is lower here, which over the course of an iron distance triathlon is where these things can be really useful once you've refined your position, because it's all about energy efficiency as well. So we've got a good example here on the road bike top flat of Arthur's seat came in at one minute 24, 32.2 kilometers an hour, 223 watts. And on the tri bike, it came in at 120, 33.8 kilometers an hour, 213 watts. So it's 0.6 kilometers an hour faster and 10 watts less. So it just goes to show that comparison and that trade-off. All in all, the conclusion I think is as is logical, which is when hills are involved over, this, over such a short distance, the road bike has today come out on top because it's just got that advantage on the hills. When it comes to cornering, when it comes to handling, today, the way things have unfolded, it means that the road bike's been a bit nippier in and around, and I haven't had much chance to really sit in and drop power like that. So the fact that I haven't had the ability to do that, but it's still so close, overall, 
demonstrates just how powerful these things can be. Yes, it makes it a bit more difficult climbing wise, but when you get the opportunity to really tuck in and go in error and make use of that position, it does add up over time. I hope that has been useful, even though we were all expecting the tri bike to come out on top, I think it's fair to say. But again, at my body weight, sitting up about 92 kilos, hills are my worst enemy. So put me on something that isn't as good at climbing and the difference will add up. All about marginal chains, bruh. Get it, because we're on a bike and they have chains and stuff. Yeah, cool. So that is gonna be the video today. If you do have any questions about the differences between the two types of bikes, why I chose such a terrible course, and why ultimately this video hasn't necessarily gone as planned in terms of drawing out the conclusions that I wanted to, perhaps we will do a flat segment in the future in proper time trial conditions. If that's something you'd like to see, do let me know down below. If there's any other sort of specific comparison stuff like this you'd like to see, you know where to let me know. Please do make sure to like the video. Make sure you've commented down below with your thoughts, feelings, and anything else to consider, as well as having hit the subscribe button. I think we can all agree that this bike, at the very least, warrants some commitment from you. So I'm gonna do my six laps as my actual training session now. Filming these videos really does get in the way, so another reason to subscribe. Cheers, hit like, thank you, very nice. Very nice. I'm gonna get all my laps and see you next time.